based on that and so that so that that way we don't have to um uh spend a huge amount of time on it you know it seems like a good technology solution if there's if that's something that folks are open to doing so i think i'm actually supposed to be the person in charge of the minutes i do believe that is that correct uh if you were the one appointed that would be you well i i, I thought i was like Vice chair, you vice chair, yeah. yeah. So, I think we had a discussion work that meeting. Like, oh, where's the vice chair to take the next? So, <laughs> we didn't have, have a discussion again. So, if you'd like to turn to this, so it, I, 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 going we forward, about, but we, did, we don't have it on here on this stuff. Uh, uh, Zoom one that I used to create last minutes, which is so well, I had it, but it was not. We are good. We'll get into this. It's not actually one of my bullet points today. It's like kind of a lower one. For, I'll just say that we're still consolidating our Zoom account town and school. On the 15th of October, when we consolidate everything, all those functionalities will be back and you'll, you'll, you'll have the AI function in there. Mm -hmm. if, if you want. It is a helpful tool to make the minutes, but there's specific things that must be in the minutes, so they still need to be helpful. Oh, of course. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't assume that they would need I I, I was just thinking of that to use that as a starter. Yeah, it's a good that's it's a good, um right. that would then need to be um to be basically groomed as as necessary yep. for um for for whatever the the rules that we're that we need to follow so is there is there some specific information if i'm going to do this for the next meeting that you could provide me oh oh yes um and i want to give you the point is too and finally talk about oh, this <laughs> uh, they, they go over what's required uh in holding public meetings uh, but the minutes essentially have to say time, place, location, who was in attendance, who wasn't in attendance. Uh, if it's a recording, it, it has to, um, the votes have to be um, uh, recorded as roll call. Um, all motions um, that are made have to be who made the motion, what the motion is, and who seconded in the result of the, the vote. And that's that's the basic foundation of minutes. You've complied with the law. It's also helpful to add some context of what precipitated the motion. And that's where the AI tools would be helpful. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And for roll call, is that just essentially calling down the names of the participants and asking what their individual votes are? Yeah. Is, that, yeah. is that how you're how you're doing it? Okay. Yeah. And it's only required when one is one or more members participating remotely for all in the room, uh, the chair can just call for um, voice yay. Right, okay. All right, so I would say that you pass on the approval of the minutes since it's unclear and be taken up on the next agenda. Is that, would, did that work for you, Mike? Did you, did I do? Going forward, oh, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. So you, so, you, so you have because you have this this more official component now, so you don't have to deal with the minutes. So I'll sort of split it up a little bit. It, it's too much to do this and the minutes, so I have to go back to the team. So I don't. <laughs> I don't no, I I agree. I agree. That's why I'm offering. Yes. So please, in charge of the minutes. All right, so what do I have to do though for the minutes? Because for the last minutes, um, you want to resend them again? Do you want to? Yes, uh, okay. uh, do we send them and make sure, uh, make sure it's in the proper format? Then, oh, why, why don't you send them to me directly? I'll make sure it's in the proper format. Yeah. Then we just sure forget the perfect. The perfect the 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 running up day. Day. Yes. I'm going to assume so, everyone is good with this. Unless I hear back from their date, so that you can say we're good, <laughs> right? And just put on next time. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Until you get an answer. Yeah, yeah. That's, that that works. Yeah. yeah. Consolidated efforts updates. That would be me, yeah. right? Yep. So um, I was going to throw this PDF in the chat, but it looks like chat is disabled. So yeah. Are we okay? okay. We'll it, it, it's only an outline, but and I can share it. Okay, fine. Fine. So, uh, just this first bullet item is budget alignment. Um, you know, in our first month since July one, we've been, um, you know, uh, and can speak to this too. We're we're um, 
making sure that everything that was purchased <laughs> this year to date last year gets moved over to our budget, re-procured, establishing all those accounts, making sure we have proper amounts working with Dave and Anne, and everyone to get that uh, all aligned. And it's been no small task to get to figure it all out. Um, uh, but we're getting there. Um, we are, you know, we're prioritizing our major contracts because you know, ones at a time and one's the way we get to that. Um, hasn't been perfect, but we've, we've uh, been getting through them and uh, getting that procurement all done. No small task for the finance team, for sure. Um, and do you want to say anything more about that? Or I think that's good, right? Okay. <laughs> um, and more to follow. Like we have, we're always in communication with Dave saying, hey, Dave, was this really supposed to be ours or is that yours or something, you know, stuff like that. Uh, that's ongoing. Um, staffing. So uh, do you feel like it's going to be easier for you going forward? I mean, yeah, that, this year I feel we like know that's a big overhead in my life, and yeah, it's overhead. And sorry, uh, and we know that. This sorry, was, Mr. Finance. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this was the year we had to figure it all out, right? Figure out why, you know, and it's also the time to question, like, uh, are we really doing this? Like, is right. was this something that somebody two years ago asked for and that no one knew that we weren't doing it anymore? So there's all that process too. So the year of cleanup is going to be a little bit of a headache, and then I. Next year, we should be in a much better place. Yeah. Great. Great. Yes. We're going to knock on wood on that one, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so staffing update. Um, so of four new FTEs that were provisioned in this merger, we've um, hired two. Um, uh, the service desk manager, um, uh, Alan Wong, is coming over from uh, the Brookline, uh, town of Brookline, Brookline Public Schools, who have that same similar setup, you know, the, 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 in town and school relationship, not exactly the same, but um, and he's been there for 22 years, so we have a, a nice seasoned person who will be our service as man. You know, we're very excited. He's also a new resident too, um, so that's a good hire. And then um, our we just finalized our tier three network specialist, whose focus will be on um, primarily on on the town side um, to replace our network manager we lost here. Not the same skill set, but uh, a person in in that role. Um, and that person is actually someone who's been contracted with us with our outside company for the last year, year plus. So known to us, ready to go, um, and he'll be starting in a week and a half. So uh, you, I haven't told you that yet, Dave. That happened like yesterday afternoon. So that's official. Um, um, so that's good news. Still, we're still waiting on hiring uh, a, a tier one technician, uh, computer technician, um, so that we have back our numbers to properly support the town because we're still in down sort of one. Um, but we had some good applicants for that. We're hopeful on that. Um, and we've had a really hard time on the uh, Enterprise Applications Manager. It's been open since July 1 and has had very, very few qualified applicants apply for this, um, which we're kind of surprised because the salary was about the same as um, the Service Desk Manager. The Service Desk Manager was slightly higher because a 40 hour a week based on 40 hours, we know their salary, but they're based on 40 and the other one's based on 35, salary is close. Um, How much is the salary? Um, the range for the applica enterprise application is like, um, I wanna say, and help me, but it's somewhere like around 89 to 150. Yeah, yeah, um, sorry, <clears throat> Mark, tell me the grade again. I, I can um, H. Okay. I'm curious what uh, I don't think of the town as having, uh, you know, homegrown apps. So when you say application manager, what are they? It's not. It's not managing homegrown apps. It's managing the, the entire suite of okay. uh, right. applications that we buy, right? right. Which is a, a large number, especially on the school side. Um, so it's provisioning, account maintenance, data syncing. That's the, the core. So it's not end user support, it's sort of both. No, it's both. It's both. It is both. So um, on the school side and on the town side. So um, you know, each side has we, we share on the ERP, we share infinite visions, right? And um Pam Brighton came from the town um and is working for me now. Um, you know, that's her primary role is supporting that product. We're trying to get cross training here, but we you know, we're, we're still short on staff on that sense. Um so that that one, you know, that that product touches everyone, schools and town, um, all employees, all that, you know, everyone has to, some interface with that. So that's provisioning, data syncing, data exporting, importing, all that kind of stuff. That's us. Um, and user support. Then there's um, our 
power school information, or you know, our power school, our SIS. That's our big product on the school side that's always been in IT because it's the same thing. It's data syncing, it's pushing data everywhere to envision other accounts, and it's uh, end user support as well for grades, accountants, all of us. When you say it, you think about like writing scripts for that, or they wrote scripts for that and for, for the sync, the data thing. Yeah, yeah, we we write we write them, so that's the in-house work that we do. Some of them are built in, right? It's just easy FT, SFTP sends out of power school. Um, anytime you have to manipulate data, then we get involved. We also use some third-party. Who's project. the we then? Is there a development group? Or? Oh no, that's the apps team and a little bit of the network team. <laughs> and when when we were smaller, it was whoever can help. But typically, he was either my brother, the network manager, was also a programmer, right? So he just has this long history of helping. You know? um, and then uh, Will Welch, my assistant director, has a strong, uh, you know, uh, as, as he's very good at that too. So that the three of us were always the team doing this work. Now, that's the, that's the back end scripting. The applications manager and the seller is typically doing more of the end user support and, and training and that kind of stuff and account provisioning and all that. Kind of stuff. But, um, yeah. So that's those are the big three. But then there's all you know there's special ed software, there's there's food service software, there's transportation software, there's then you get on your side, there's all kinds of stuff for them. You know what water DBW, the fuel depot, they're all systems. So the basically. Fire, there's any end user es escalation that needs to involve vendor contact. This this that person does that would that would be right. that person would be yeah. involved. With so technically, in every every application, um, minus the, the two major ones, which are IV and PowerSchool SIS, we ask for the department who's fundamentally in charge. You know, it's fundamentally for food service, EPW, that they should have a, a subject area matter you know uh, an expert of themselves that is is the primary person helping their end users right so when the dpw people come in they're talking to them first and they translate up to us that's typically the model um doesn't happen in public safety so much but would that um, role be also involved with creating work aids or explaining any sort of um how things are done to either town employees or yep. school employees um, yep uh, uh, you know training materials all that kind of stuff yeah yep when we get out to those the, the classroom apps, you know, like the, the hundreds of classroom apps we have, we can't do that, right? It's just too many. And we're expecting the instructional technologists and the even some of the classroom teachers, if they want that app, then they're gonna be the expert and build that, you know, that training for themselves because it's 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 kind of a one off or a reading tool or whatever it is, right? We don't technically go down that far, but for the main enterprise ones. Yeah, but in terms of training procurement. Or staff, or or other people, and such person could yeah. be involved with determining fit yeah. for training. So yeah. this person that we're trying to hire is the is the manager of that team. So they'll be not only doing the work, but managing the other two. So it's, it's not only an app job, but it's also managing the other two. Um, and you know, we have a lot of applicants on the service desk manager side, a lot, like in the thirty to forty range that up then. And maybe 10 hopefuls got down to about five pretty well qualified. And then, you know, and, and as you weed them out, we had a final two, you know, and, and made a selection. But this side is really, we're really surprised that. So it's, it's 19. That's all, I don't know, it's hard What's that, Anne? 99 to 113. Yeah. So, like, you know, a lot of my colleagues in other districts, you know, that I know do like the power school app stuff, I was, you know, I'd ask them, like, what? And they're like, yeah, you know what? We don't want to take on the they didn't want to take on the town, and they didn't want to take on something different, you know, because it's town and schools now. It's not just school or just town. I was just surprised, surprised that we didn't get someone to jump. You know, we have one applicant right now that has some experience at it, but it's hard to have a job search with one applicant. You know, like it's not a great place to start. You know, why is it um, not full time? What's that? Why is it not full time? It is full time. Sorry, yeah. Oh. I thought you said it was 35 hours a week. That's that's full time. time. That's full time, time for the town. Right. Yes. All right. I, I, I mean, it's salary basis. None of us who are salary based doing 35 hours actually work 35, but you're, they base your, your hourly rate and your salary based on 35, right? So if you can take a vacation week, you get paid 35 hours, right? Yeah. Lunch, lunch is unpaid. The lunch hour is not paid. Right. But I just wanted to, so 
I sort of consider the script writing app work. Does that just store that stuff in Git? Yeah. Do you have like good procedures on that? We, kind of stuff, we that that you know we actually had a we have a plant Moran coming back to do a, a study right now. They're in the process of to say we need to better, you know, we need to better have a better look at our data moving processes and and um and do that, do that work, you know, because we're home, you know, we, we started up from homegrown and you know, and I, you know, and knows I've been saying for a long time, you can't rely. I love doing some of that stuff, but you can't have me doing stuff or my brother doing it or my it's just, you know, you can't have one person doing this who could walk or get hit by a bus or retire because now all that knowledge is in them. So we've been trying to with the merger look at things differently and say, well, this is the time we're going to take on this work to to either outsource some of that stuff if when we can. So it's actually being done by a product, right? That's that's managed and because there's these companies like like we've been looking at, you know, Snowflake and other ones that that will actually Hold our data and 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 move and and manipulate yeah. and transfer. We do that with Classlink and Clever, anyways. Right now, they have part of that built in where they'll take our data, massage it, and spit it out to another product. You know, um, but it's managed. So if 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 I get hit by a bus, you know, and can call that company and say, yeah. where where are we? You know, we don't have this person anymore. I need to hire someone, but help us get through this. That's what we need to do more of in this big merger. And that's what we're trying to do. Data yeah. link approach as opposed to uh, yeah. So um, USB key approach. Yes. So that's where we're sort of at with that job. I um, yeah. I, I just again um, we it might actually be helpful Ed, to share that to share that job description with you guys to say what what's wrong like what what's you know what's why would someone not take this job you know. Is it the money? Is it the something about responsibilities? Is it, you know? I mean, commercially, it's probably about 150, 175. Right. Yeah. That's but, you know, the, the selling thing, and we know that, right? We know we're yeah. not competing with that, but. Yeah, I mean, know, we have no pension. Right, and 35 hours a week, right? I mean, the job is, this job, I, I will say this, um, for the app team, you know, the service test team, my job, my office manager, my network team, they get asked to do stuff. You know, they're, they're, all the emergencies happen in there, right? The apps team is typically not working. It's what I do. Right? That, support. Right. You're right, not this, working that much good. beyond that, yeah. that. You know, yeah. so in that sense, it's kind of not a bad job, right? It's 35 hours a week. It's a pension. It's vacation time. It's all, all that stuff. I can I, I, I but it's not working in a certainly not working in a modern high paced you know uh you know top, you know tech company that's for sure you know we're not we yeah. don't have basketball it's not for, <laughs> you know, we don't have free lunch and whatever you know it's, <laughs> but, it's not for everyone either because right, right. that requires a certain level of intensity yeah it, you know or you what what for you you yeah. know, a certain yeah. level of intensity. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still get more done than everyone, but you know, yeah, yeah, it requires, you know, like you said, uh, 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 a straightforward good manager. You know, that's what you need. You need a really good manager who has application skills. Yeah. So, more to come on that. Hopefully, you know, more more about it. Yeah, ship us the. Yeah. Yeah, you know, description. Right on my mind, too. I can set up links. It's there. For you. Um, but you know something, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna, um, all right. So that's that. That's uh, staffing. Cybersecurity. We've begun our um, our cybersecurity assessment and uh, our ramping up the penetration testing. It reads a little bit differently there. It actually hasn't started yet, but we've been in the uh, uh, parameters talks, and we're probably going to pull the trigger in the next week and a half or something about actually. Running the job. Um, how, how are you doing the assessment? Like what's what's, that? So, so do you have also, a copy? So, uh, we've uh, we've hired Blue Mantis as the cybersecurity um, consultant. Uh, if you're familiar with them? They fill a lot of schools and towns. Um, so they're doing two two things. They're doing an assessment of our policies, procedures, you know, general setup, you know, a, an assessment of the structure, and then separately a pen a pen test. Are they looking at your data protection policies, kind of where data is? All of uh, that. So I'm, yeah, yeah, yep. So that's all in the uh, assessment part of it. All of that. It's been they're doing all of all of those um, 
all of that work. Yes, been hours and hours of of, of uh, interviewing on that. Um, okay. The pen testing, um, we just had to reset some parameters, you know, uh, and and how we want it to happen. Both schools and town. What is pen? Uh, pen penetration testing. Penetration, 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 penetration yeah. testing. They're looking for holes. Yeah. So they're going to do both so internal and external. So they're going to come from the outside, and then we're also going to put a device inside that would act like someone got in, and 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 then go. What um, do you have anything that they're like? Do they have a shared framework or a criteria of what they're looking for, or that would defeat the purpose? Uh, a little not so on on, a, on the penetration testing. Yeah, a, a little bit. Um, and and just there's no no. Well, this is being recorded, right? Yes. So yes. Can we maybe we have a side? Uh, yeah. Let's side like take that sidebar because yep. you know, stuff around yeah. cybersecurity. I'm, I don't want to be. In the public, yeah. uh, I, have some, I, I have some yeah. ideas and some suggestions based on yeah. just stuff that I I'd see. love to talk yeah. about. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, yep. So that work, um, the the study, not the pandemic, the study is due to be done um, mid October, like the, the you know the study, um, the actual you know document to give back to the administration of where we're at and recommendations and all that kind of stuff. Um. Yes. Okay. Um, so, the, and then the, the, the next subject was uh, IT projects, um, upcoming projects. Um, we have a new staff wireless um, finally coming on board active today. Dave, we don't even know that we were just testing in house today. The staff never had their own wireless. It's always public wireless. And so if the staff wanted to use their laptop, they were on public. So, you know, they couldn't print, they couldn't get to anything. Oh, I see. Like, you know, print there. So, um, so this will be like we have in the school a separate you know hidden network that's just for just for staff and they won't it'll just be certificate based they, when they log in their laptop they'll get it um, they can't give it out to anybody they can't they can't get on um, which will allow them to get to their shared drives and their and their printing uh, in apps because we're moved we have moved them to a laptop model right um, they were on mostly desktop model yep. and now we're moving them to everyone except for spe specialty people. I'm moving to a laptop body. So when they go to a meeting, they can bring the laptop. I know it sounds like something that should have been done like that ago, but uh, but that's that's where we're at. That's what we're what we're getting to. Um uh we're we're using VPN access to replace Citrix. Um we don't use Citrix anymore for um our for in the divisions. Um it has a heavy cost to town and um the VPN solution will will solve that for the those folks who need to get back to the never like Citrix. So no. it's um, just me. No. Um and uh it may never been configured properly, who knows? But it, it's it was more, always trouble, right? Yeah, it was always trouble here. So um so uh that that's happening as we speak. Um we are trying to find the right device management. Um for our laptops and our and our deployments for on the Windows side, you know, um, we have it down on the school side. Um, we use um, FileWave and uh, Jamf from the iPads. Work. So we got we've got iPads and phones that we, we get that piece of it, but um, we're really we're struggling a little bit with what to what to use uh, for the laptop desktop deployment. Um, so we can standardize software like we do on the school side. We just, you know, we we provision the laptop, get it, get it turned on whenever, add it, and then based on your your user profile, you're getting what you're supposed to get, right? Um, and the town's done some great work to develop user profiles and what they're supposed to get, but now we got to find the right tool to get it out there. And you know, it, it isn't my team's strong point, so we're trying to get some advice from vendors. We'll take any advice we can get. Um, is this like for security patching and updates, or no? Is this, this is actual like you know deploy. like um. Uh, deployment. So well, you're you're actually well. It it can be both, right? Right now we use ConnectWise to do our patching. This could replace some of that. Like on our side, the, you know our MDA or, or our management software does that patching do. So we could replace it. It is a good um, statement to say that. But um, you know, there's Microsoft. What do they call it? Entra ID. What is the new term for AD in the cloud? And, and it is Intune. They keep changing yeah, the name. Yeah. So Intune is what we're strong on. Looking at because it could, yeah, it could do it can do the iPhones on the side too. It can even do a Mac on the side. Yeah. There's one over here. It can do a lot of that now, but it's kind of new and not everyone's doing it. So trying to get not new, but they're trying to 
we're very legacy here, and to to move all that over, we gotta we gotta get some help and and uh, get that done. That's kind of where we're leading. It's just um we want to explore all the possibilities before we make that decision because it's a big jump, right? A big investment in time to do that. So what that um next year? What Microsoft um, licensing level is the town using? Are you an E five or an E three? Or E three. Thank you. Sorry. What does E5? Sorry, what does E5 give you? E5 gives you access to Purview um, and some other data security tools, but it's okay. it's a lot. It's like twenty eight dollars. I don't know what the public sector licensing cost is. It's like twenty eight dollars yeah. user per month, so it's quite expensive. Yeah, yeah. E3 is what we get. Yeah. Yep. Um. So anybody who has weigh in on that, we would all obviously appreciate any. Help, advice, whatever. Um, you know, we're asking our management. Um, you know, we're asking InterSystems, our managed service provider, but always having another lens on it. We would certainly welcome anybody who has any thoughts or advice on that. Um, the a big one this year is our data centers. Um, we're replacing. We're going from I call it three and a half, we're from four locations down to two and a half. Um, so we'll be replacing our data centers to. From, from this building, public safety, PSAP, the DPW building, and a tiny thing at um, the CAF building down to Town Hall, public safety, and uh, PSAP, uh, the uh, data uh, backup center. So we'll be reducing that. Um, and, and an important piece to that actually is going to be taken up at this town meeting in October. 21st, uh, there's an article for repair and upgrade at Town Hall. We need to uh, revamp our AC and um, ventilation system, particularly for the circuit room. That's yeah. why I was thinking it might be good to do a tour so they can help. <laughs> uh, we have to, um, that of course was one of the things that led to the, the loss of the AS400 last yeah. September. Was the DAC went down, the room overheated and fried DAS 400. And we had, we had multiple, uh, events multiple, since multiple events since then. Yeah. Is there like remote temperature monitoring that you're going to be as we are, uh, considering? Considering that as we speak, we're, we're <laughs> moving back and forth between who's going to do it, facilities or us. And I, I got it. We're, I just, yeah. the only time we're, we're going to do it. The, so, the issue uh, is the AC. Um, the air conditioning system was designed for an office building and not designed for a server. And, and it's old, but it's legacy system. technology. Yeah. It's not, yeah. if you go in there, see, it's three, or lock of our, whatever, you know, three, I think they do make, they do make data center cooling, but like, if you saw it, you would say you were, you know, in the 90s somewhere and, and not. Yeah, you know, the PPPC wasn't happy with discussions we had with them at so the time. It was also designed when they had PPC. way more servers in there, right? Part like of we are going to bring back building. servers in there. We're going to we're going to merge slammed our by them multiple times. So we're going to you know the plan and is everything to bring the, comes the up data center over here, right? Um so of the failures. One network team, one core data center will all be in here, but I can't move them until that's resolved. Yeah. Well, Just, if that's the downstairs room and it to that whole keep saying we're not we shouldn't do that. Well, I would never have a computer room below grade, but that's me. Well, yeah, we lost have... that argument. Is it yeah, it's the, the, the thing we have never had a flooding issue here. Yeah. We're going back a hundred years of records. So no one say that. Don't say that. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 I guess condemn myself. Yes, yes. 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 There'll be sewage in your room tomorrow. The only, the only good news is that the Needham Flats has to be filled to come to yeah. here. So and that's a square mile. Short, short of building a new data center. <laughs> you know, one foot is more water than you can ever imagine. Short of building a new data center, yeah. essentially, which would be re rewiring a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, just the sheer cost. We can address that issue over time, but for the short time, we have, it really needs to be here. Yeah. This piece app is not a viable option. Um, Why? It lets, uh, in fact, yeah, that I'd be more worried about. Because you, is that you below grade? The, the reservoir goes. <laughs> is that is the computer room below grade or is it's it below the reservoir? That's for sure. Oh, it's in the basement. 
Well, no, no, it's on the ground floor. There is no it, basement at the uh, public service administration okay. building, but it's at it's ground. lower than the reservoir. But yeah. in the flooding from the August eighth storms from uh, from two thousand twenty three, that area flooded. We didn't flood. Yeah. yeah. So a good point. Uh, you know, looking at the future, um, have data some next year, but for the for the short term, we're stuck with what we've got. Um, and we're going to we're, so we're going to make that we're going to we're going to do that work this year. Hopefully, uh, in the December timeframe, we'll be working on those data center replacements. Um, and the last goal is reconfiguring our backup configuration because it was not a good configuration. Um, and we will be moving to a, a prop a more proper. Um, you know, uh, moving between the two data centers is uh, uh, automatic and not what it has been. Um, with a third redundant uh, backup site and then cloud on top of that. Is, is, that, is there that. any opportunity with consolidation to also consolidate locations into school facility locations? For example, the new administration building construction. We would have loved that, that but that building was tight. Oh, I'm, sure the, it was tight. I'm sure it's fully, if, I fully they, expect out, but that yeah, was definitely not, pulled out of the plan to reduce the cost of it. I think it was the finance committee really pushed them. Yeah. Removed from the project. They had built. They, there was a wing that included my IT team on that building, mm -hmm. but that got pulled. And in fairness, it couldn't be big enough to fit us anymore. But as the plans came along, they you know because it had to go back towards the back parking lot of mm -hmm. that Emmer Grover, and they couldn't build a big enough space to hold all of us because, well, at the time we were fifteen of us plus fifteen cars, fifteen you know all of that right all all in that space. So we realized that wasn't going to work. Um, we are hopeful with the redo of Pollard that they're going to consider an IT center at Pollard, but that's still seven, seven to, and no, it's not seven to nine years away, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and is that rather than something like that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And my, my understanding with, because right now we, we are still stuck at Hillside. So the IT team is not moving to Amber Grover. The only person on now after all that is, is I'm, I will have a desk over there. But my team will be over on Hillside. For so, my, can I say one thing about putting your hopes on Pollard? Um, I've seen some of the preliminary budget numbers for a Pollard, and they're astronomical to build that yeah. school. Um, what I have also heard is that the state, as far as the reimbursement goes, is going to be for a certain number of students, which is already at the low end of what we're projecting we're going to need. So we we went to the state with, and I'm going to make these numbers up because I don't have the exact ones, but I think we went to the state with 1,500 students. The state came back and said, no, we're only going to let you build the 1,300. So that project's already going to be super budget constrained. And yeah. as, we, as we all know, IT always gets yanked at the last minute because it's yeah. pure. Budget. So just be careful. Yeah, anything that they build us will be outside scope and have to pay you know, extreme tax credit dollars. Yeah. No, I, I'm not super hopeful. You know, I, I may not, I might be retired by that point. You know, yeah. who knows? But, and I always joke that we won't probably be here for that, but that's okay, you know. But um probably not. You know, so then the other real conversation is like if we think it's not gonna happen, then they need to do something with ID because Hillside is not viable for the forever future because right. it has its own issues and it's very expensive to maintain, right? So at that point, we'd be looking for like either renting office, you know, renting space, or you know, in the industrial park. The other, the other big one is a possibility is Jack Cogswell. You know, there, there's a project over there that we could attach on to. But these are all, you know, we're coming late to the game, and that's hard to do. Um, so now, now that we're consolidated, the nice piece of it is that that how you got we, we all they don't even have to deal with us, right? Like we have, we have to have a place. We're not two separate teams and. Whatever happens, happens. They know they have to deal with it. It's just, it's not easy to deal with us. We're, we're, we're baby now. What's going to happen now, son? First, we're. Yes, so eventually, it has to come down. The building is. Right, the building, which is going to make a park. And there's a well, be... the community hasn't made this decision. There's some that we'd like to see it become some sort of community center. Others would like to just see the active playing fields. Others. Just want to see it fall off and not allow anybody but the neighbors to use the site. So you, there's a lot of betting. Yeah. Yeah. It, anybody's, nobody's worried about toxic. Yeah, isn't there contamination on that site? It, it, it monitor. It's, it's underground. Um, and so you're not digging down. And um, it, 
well, yes, it's monitored as many sites are. It's over time, it does abate. It just, it's decades, not a few years. Um, and uh, and a private company is actually responsible for paying for those monitoring costs uh, every year. So what gets built there will be a slab and then built up. Again. But again, it's it's not even about pollution concerns or hazardous concerns. It's just about use concerns, which uh, will will require many meetings, many town meetings to vet through before something's decided. But that's way out, right? I mean, yeah. I'm thinking about we we just, won't be getting out of there. You know, anytime. we are going to consolidate that. We're gonna we're gonna shrink ourselves right now. We we have the whole bottom floor basically. Um, we're gonna consolidate, shrink back, and go up. So we'll and we're gonna have some leave some meeting spaces in there for both town. We'll you know focus up, up on the front part to reserve rooms if they need to zoom rooms over there. Is the intent to locate the the team desks and the data center in the same facility? That would be a, a, an ideal future, <laughs> but. As we with Paul, if Pollard can't happen, it would have to be another source. It would have to be another building. It would have to be another. And you know, our taxpayer is going to go for building a facility for IT, probably not. Could we rent space? Maybe. You know, that that might be more economic. It might be a more economical thing than than building for us. But it has its problems too. It does yeah. uh, in terms of just procurement. So that's sort of the future of the future of us too, in that in that in all this, you know, um, we don't know where we're gonna end up. But the the the, the, the short term, short term, long term plan is the network team will be sitting here, data center will be here for both schools and that the main data center for schools in town will be here. Um obviously the schools have lots of other centers in the schools. Um and then the town and the town will have the other ones here. Um, and yeah, so there'll be really two locations when we're all done with my one seat at Emory Grove, right? But that's more of a placeholder than most of my time will be, I don't think. Thank me. Excellent update. Any more questions? Is there anything on this uh, backup reconfiguration data point here? On? Oh, I, I, sorry, I was just saying that we we're changing the way we do things because it, it, we really without, we can have an offline conversation about tax practices, but um, uh, we are correcting those practices as we speak and making sure that we have multiple redundant backup sites. It's much more fun, you know. Yeah. Well, you, you guys know we last Thursday we had a you know an event in the data center. Do you know do you know that? Yeah. So we had our our sand controller came offline and just left us you know, a complete fear of the nightmare that we have all we all worry about that we didn't get the data center replaced fast enough. But um, we thought we were going to have a multi-day problem, but thanks to the team um, really sticking it out. And, and rethinking how to get that, you know, there's like two controllers on top of that sand, and they were able to get control of one of them and, and get the whole thing going again and rebuild. And we've no data loss, no whatever. And we are scrambling fast to get the new data centers put in. What um what sand is that? Uh, uh so we have three sands in the district, right? They're Dell Dell sands. Um, that um, all that for our VM structure. So we have three. VM centers here now. All, they're all Dell sands. I can tell you what they actually were. But yeah, do you know which ones? Are they like Dell compellents? Are they Isilons? Uh, I can I can I can go. Look. I I can't remember now. I should remember for when we were, we were just um looking at the service contract on them. So I can find that out for you. Yeah, I mean the question I would have is the, are they under maintenance? Um, because a single controller, they, these things are redundant. They should fail over gracefully. Did did it not? It did not. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. And um, the age on the sand when we pulled it up was 2018. Oh, no. Yeah, the typical the typical refresh cycle on uh, on sands yeah. three to five years. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Are Are so you? We're gonna, try, we're gonna correct that. <laughs> do you have any initiative to kind of look relook at what you're doing for sands? 
so yes, um, and I should I can uh, certainly share with you the, uh, what we're the, you know we're just about the you know going, we just got the final stuff back from Dell uh, on what the cafe looked like. Um, I you know the managed service company they sort of spearheaded that for us of what the new structure would look like. Um, and I apologize, I don't have the top of my head, but yeah, I can get you all that. Yeah, I mean, so I I spent seventeen years at, I, yeah. at a sand company, so uh, yeah. this this is like my near and dear to my heart. Are you only sorry. are you only looking at Dell? Honestly, only because that's what our only our managed service provider. You know, they're obviously they're a Dell house. They everyone in houses that's what they that's what they do. That's the only reason why I I, I wasn't going anywhere else. Um, um, who who is the managed service provider? Um, interest systems. Sorry. Okay, and your but so. Needham owns and capitalizes the equipment. They just operate it. Is that right? Yeah, they install, operate. I mean, very different from schools are separate from town here. On the school side, we do our own work. But on the town side, they've always had someone doing that work, racking up, servicing, main, you know, maintaining all of that. And now, are you, systems? Intra systems. Intra systems. Yeah. Are you going to have to go out to bid to procure the hardware or no? State, state contract. It, it's already been procured by the state. And the town was allowed to purchase with the state contract. Yeah, yeah, that, that was like ITC forty seven or something like that. They were right. Yeah. It's the ITC contracts. Um, so I'm just going to throw it out there. There are other providers out there that are on yeah. state contract. I, I know that Interest Systems might have expertise in the Dell, and I there, obviously there's some economies of scale there. Um, but this is, in my opinion, the perfect time to see if there could be something better. Yeah. Um, but obviously if intra systems is who you're contracted with and they deal with it, I, I understand the rationale here. Well, and know. only because of where we're up against legacy hardware that's now, you know, definitely in, in trouble. But but the, but here's the thing, we certainly we can do this, but then our next three year, three to five year recycle, we'll make a plan to look at make sure that we we don't do it again, right? We we can say that for sure. Well, why don't I send it to you? I'll send it to you. That'd just be great. A little bit. Yeah. One question about this, because this is kind of an interesting theme that's sort of emerging in the in the meeting here, is of of, of things of, of of making strategic choices as a response to a situation that you have to make a choice very okay. quickly on, and um and. Uh, also, uh, the other thing being that you know IT being cut or sort of at the bottom of the at the back of the the feed the feed bag or the trough uh, uh, whenever these major projects come through, has there ever been any attempt to try to quantify um, costs associated with not having strategic planning um, as an argument for having more IT rainy day fund capability if that if that yeah. doesn't already exist. No, I mean, I think I think there has not been a minus the merger, you know, uh, yeah. study that we've done. We know um, there hasn't been any. I would say definitely not not in the past. If you you know on this side, but certainly not on our side. Any? Oh, I, the only Alex extent the uh, well certainly no um, uh, cost uh, benefit analysis other than to know that. Over the years, that so many uh, so many functions have been supplanted by technology, that intuitively people get that if we were to get out of technology, it would be more expensive. Right. That would increase headcount. But uh, a study to show um, what uh, costs uh, could be avoided by doing such a thing that. Uh, uh, that has not been done. I'm not sure if there's anybody that's, that has an interest in such a thing because so, because it, that would require. I mean, I'm just making an observation yeah. or a, an insight here that, um, that. So I just didn't know if there's if that's if if that's if there's fertile ground for that. The um, well, uh, to the extent of that, we had to fight to get funding just to have a cybersecurity study, which was. Problematic to get through because when you're competing against all teachers for your children and uh, paramedics to come when you're having a medical emergency or a study on cybersecurity. Through I'm the possibility of all of your children's social security numbers being sold. <laughs> so, How about that? That's <laughs> yeah. But uh, so much back 
tax get delayed. Better early than late. Yes. Good, good. Or, or or the city of Dallas, Texas being down for, for weeks because of uh, an issue with cyber event and with, with a with user operator error on their backups. So, I mean, th there's a lot, like cybersecurity is super important. It, uh, you know, well, and we did get the funding for that, but even if that was a battle to get the, yeah. to get the funding. Yeah. And, that, and that battle continues because that was one-time funding, right, to buy something. So the idea was we'd have a cybersecurity assessment, right? We did a penetration testing. That would give us some, uh, you know, recommendations for what we should do as a footprint, you know, as a policy moving forward. We would use the one-time money from the, from the merger money to buy that, but there's no ongoing budget for that. Mm -hmm. And that's a $235,000 line, right? That's a huge line yeah. item um, that we don't have a next year budget for yet. Be prepared to spend, yeah. And so I'm going to say is like the cyber stuff isn't cheap. No, I mean, that, that 230, that 230 something or whatever was in there was not, not unrealistic, <laughs> you know, not at all, you know. Well, now, that, Rob, this is where you go and you say, if you have an event, it will cost this. Yeah. So do you want to spend for that when it happens or this? Yeah, I mean, so so when they start looking at it, I don't want to get into it on, on recorded screen here, but uh, when they start looking into the various components and, and how you're kind of protecting things, the, the vendors themselves are very good at providing TCOs and... Yeah. Like the De Deloitte actually has a really good published costing model for what the cost of downtime is. And you can really plug in the numbers, you know, for a municipality versus a private entity. So that should be fairly easy to suss out and show to the finance committee or show to whoever you have to show to, to justify the spend that here's what a day of downtime is going to cost us. Here's what we think is going to be the average downtime. If someone gets in behind the firewall and takes out our VM environment, for instance, or just, or whatever that is like, yeah. you know, Here's what the cost of downtime is if there's sand for a week. You know, I think those numbers will will prove themselves out. And just the little event we had on uh, Friday, Friday afternoon, of course, right? It's just a stupid little email phishing that wasn't in it, kind of not being phishing. It was actually someone got control of a teacher's account in the high school, uh, two accounts were compromised. But you know, the spin on that for you know, I don't know, four or five of my staff members were. Mm -hmm seven six seven hours you know like just that one small event that you can quantitate those hours right and and then that's how i'm going to justify a tool i need to add on to google to make sure some of this doesn't happen you know um but yeah so, so if, is the town using google or the town's using google for the schools google, yeah uh town is 365, 365 for the town is, is there talk of merging those two I have not wanted to ruffle any feathers on yeah. the side. <laughs> that's a whole, that's a big battle. Yeah. So, yes, I, know, I know it's a religion thing and I know a lot of schools use Google. Here's what I'll say about M365. Your ability to detect intruders and that kind of thing, there's a lot more tools that work with M365 uh, than there is with Google. Yeah. All, all, all I was just going to add before you said that, um, it's kind of interesting is, the town does uh, has to stay with uh, with Microsoft because some of the vendors that we deal with, including some of the governmental agencies, will only accept us working with uh, Microsoft. So we're sort of Google was not really in the town's future, anyways. And now you're saying that makes it uh, more obvious why some of them are doing it, particularly all the financial institutions. Do you have any Azure footprint from the town at all? Uh, yeah, um, you know, we have a, we have a hybrid, um, so we have a hybrid AD structure, you know, in Azure, mm -hmm. yeah. which they don't call Azure anymore, right? They call it Entra. Entra, right? yep. Entra, yeah, I think the name changed yeah. a hell of it. <laughs> you know, yes. Uh, so we have a hybrid, we have on-premise cloud. Um, we would like to move to cloud only, uh, but um, that's just going to take that, you know, thanks. I mean, they could certainly move to like Google for G for email if they wanted to and still stay in a 365 environment, but I don't think there's, there's no real reason to do that if you're going to be in a 365 environment other than some of the functionality people have had, you know, wanted to, to, to do. Um, that's not something we're going to probably take on anytime. And, and, and uh, you know, 
for the schools to move it to be cost prohibitive for us right now. It's just not something that we would. Yeah. Yeah, the per seat cost for education for Google is the big is the thing yeah, that's makes it so attractive. <laughs> yeah. So and Microsoft is Microsoft was doing it for nothing for a long time, but they just, you know, as of August 21st, they're they pulled that back. So yeah, each, you know, you now have to pay. So um so that zero dollar Google thing is yeah, but it's not zero. If you want the you know the more higher end tools, you do have to pay, but relatively speaking, it's still expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, technology projects. Oh, that was we did those. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I did them all as well. I did it all at once. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. I jumped a little bit. Top any new topics? Uh, uh, nothing that I'm aware of, other than scheduling for. I was gonna say I had future meetings meeting. written down. Yeah. I thought we should put maybe on an agenda item for how we. And generally talk about how we set the agenda. I was thinking maybe you should be setting the agenda and asking us, you know. I would I would definitely like this board to have help me as an advisor, like a, like a, like an advisory board, you know. And you were saying, you know, a, a board with no teeth, right? But for me, it doesn't matter the teeth. I need I can use advice, you know, like that's I'm talking with you about, you know, like I, I that's what I would like to see this board do. I don't know what the no, way. and we can yeah. do that. It, yeah. That's part of the thing yeah. is giving advice is really and some of some of the thing I, I talk about is like you know if we're going to get into cybersecurity that that that's not online, right? That's yeah, not, that may be a problem, but still, I mean, some of these other things, rules are behind some of that stuff. Like, can we have offline conversations? Exactly. No, you can have. I used to have one on ones with Roger. Yeah. No. No. I get that piece. You know. You know, and yeah. you can have one on ones with any member of this board. Correct. Uh, Yes, okay. you just can't come to any decisions. The right. decisions have to be yeah. debated. But this is the one on one. It's going to be, you know, more than one on one. Like, no. yeah. In fact, on October 1st, you got to learn about all those things. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I mean, uh, but you can always go as a town citizen and ask. Yeah, to an <laughs> Yeah, but I was going to say, I was going to yeah. get out. Cross know, board education. Really? You think can't is... hide behind that. You're a board member. The perception is you're a board member. That's oh, okay. why. Um, no, no, I understand. You don't actually have to say, you know, like a select board member might be at a forum and it would explicitly say, I am not here representing the board, I'm speaking as such. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, the I, sand I would, yeah. or all these other things, yeah. maybe if we, we have them on the agenda first, yeah, we can start having detail, you know. Yeah. I, I think that I'm happy to suggest topics for sure. Right. You know. Um, I, you know, I, as long as we're just within the realm of what we're supposed to be doing, I'm, I'm, I'm all right, I think it's very much, yeah. So, um, I, mean, I don't know if we should talk I mean, about SEVs either, but, you know, should we kind of, is there any postmortem that we'd want to help with on, on here, the incidents we had, or? It's up. Only if it benefits you. This is for, yeah. you know, so, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think it's better to be having conversations about how, what, what, what your all expertise can help in this rather than me just reporting on what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you guys want to update what's we're, happening, yeah. but that doesn't. They're fun conversations. We can set up working meeting. You're not, you're not, you're not advisory board at that point. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think we could set up a working meeting, right? We actually have a working meeting. And do we have to have Zoom meetings? Uh, select board. This uh, there is not a state law that requires it. Not yet. Probably coming. Uh, but the select board did go to policy that they want to, you know, for transparency meetings to all be accessible remotely. So they would like us to discuss publicly cybersecurity. Well. What about executive session? The other boards have executive session where they go off Zoom. Uh, that is the area that I have to check with town council because not anybody can just go into executive session. You actually have to have the, the, the authority to do what the executive session could accomplish. If you don't, then, uh, then you're just 
you are the public, and therefore, if you're hearing information, then the public's entitled to hear it. So uh, it's a very fine line, but I was going to check, see about um, whether or not we could have an executive session conversation about cybersecurity, even if it's just for an update, but that I need town council to wait on. Even like, so I, I, I mean, I'm talking about the structure of our SANS. I'm not going to say publicly where our data centers are and which ones are what. I, I'm not never going to say that in public. I'm not going to, like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not uttering those words. Like this one's here, that one's I mean, here. I think if I this, do here. I'm not saying that here because that's, that's part of cybersecurity. If the select board, yeah. If we asked the select board, they'd look at you like we were crazy asking a question, but we're saying, yeah. I mean, there's a public safety component to this. Yeah, that is, um, that is, that is, uh, you know, information security related, but it's also related to, to device security as well. So, um, you know, I think, you know, some, some degree of confidentiality is, is, is necessary for the advisory component right. to be, to be operating. I think that the board, can take meetings that are informational and public that are not necessarily in that context. And if there's a way that we can figure out, you know, you were saying working meeting, you know, perhaps it's just information gathering or an advisory meeting or or some some other other type of capability that we formalize yeah. um, and that we can report back in these board meetings that possibly could be a way to satisfy things i don't know Dave, what, what what your thoughts are there the, the um i again i would have to give the council of advice the select board clearly could go into an executive session over this because they have authority they have right. the warrant making committee so that's the clue you have right in terms of decisions in terms of security and to the degree that um that it would not be in the public interest to be public information. And again, good clarity from town council on that. Uh, but we can certainly come back with our ideas and suggestions for vetting uh, from, from you all, if that if, can be helpful. If we could be in any way under the umbrella of public safety um around some of the information security components i think that would be one way legally potentially to provide some um some uh the, the, the right safety and the right transparency because even you know just so we all say it you know even though there's nobody up here today who's the public online this is going this meeting is going to be posted online Perfect. for everyone to listen to it so yeah that's if sure. I'm a nefarious actor, let's watch the text advisory board talk about all the security holes in there. Oh, yeah. I think we, do, we do have one. Oh, we do, sorry. All right. Sorry. We do have one. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Right. So we have somebody on. Yeah, someone's on. Uh, someone. Thank you for joining us. This <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so it's a good topic about protecting our, our, our ourselves and, um, well, and citizens. Right. We need to have Yeah, them. I but, mean that's that's who we, we're here to protect mostly. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's schedule some future meetings and then maybe we should schedule setting the agenda. Yep. Yeah. Time frames before then. And that he, uh I can do with you be a chair. The, the chair controls the agenda. That's I know, but you're helping me out so much, did <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got to get your blessing before yes. I go forward with yep. it. Nope. And we've been doing it. You can it's get some legalized. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, run, you run large teams of people. I, you go and set up agenda meetings all the time. <laughs> so for October, um, October's a tough month. Um, because as it happens, Halloween happens to be on a Thursday. So and then we have a, a special town meeting is in uh it's the week of the 21st in, and i have night meetings. in october yes october 21st i have night meetings every single night that week mm -hmm. so um well we could do a simpler next meeting with the door of every girl over hopefully maybe by then we would have some answers or maybe possibly have some answers about what we can do or not do and November 7th is this Thursday and 
November. Yep. Uh, just November. Because I don't think Halloween would be a good day to <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's spooky. November seventh work for all of you. Oops, yep. Speaking of November seventh, is there is there do do we ever touch on um technology related to to say elections or is that something that's done through, through that's state office? by the Secretary of State's office. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. State office. Yeah, yeah, they have a whole set of stuff that we we don't touch. They deal with iPads from everybody, not, not in our network do all things. Yeah, that's only two approved vendors for technology uh, for voting machines and such. Um, it's good that that's in someone else's hands. <laughs> I feel a little more sleep. <laughs> yes. All right, November 7th? November 7th. Um, Do we want to have that meeting at the Amber River building? If it works. Yeah. 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 If you're, if you're well, I mean, by that, we, if, if you are not talking about that, I won't have a job, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, in the conference room? We'll, we'll book a conference room. And, yep. That'd be cool. Emory Grover, and then uh, perhaps how does uh, December 5th look for everybody? Um, the following week would be a bit better. The 12th of December. Sounds good today, right? I'm so far away, but it's not. And I would anticipate December for the twelfth. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. December twelfth. And I would anticipate for that meeting, we would uh, be presenting to you the tech, whatever technology that's uh, capital that's being proposed for the annual town meeting. Okay. Yeah. You're out of time. Rob, just really quickly, I just was reading my email. So they Dell is still revising the final quote. So give me a couple of days to, for them to get that to me and I'll get it to you. Sure. Yeah. And if you, if you want to contact me separately, we can talk. Yeah. 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 Great. What's what's the, the consulting? What's the name of the consulting firm again? I'm gonna write it down. So intra intra systems. I N T R A. Where are they based? They it was Braintree. There was some merger stuff there. I want to say Braintree. Yeah. As the last month, they were Braintree. Yeah. As the last month, yeah. they were I mean, I think the, the staff is mostly remote. <laughs> you know, so they're all over the place, but. I'll have to find a quote, but yeah, it, the last quote I saw that I just signed was last this month, actually, it was Braintree. So, Braintree, we're going Braintree. <laughs> I found him. Great. We just need a motion to adjourn, which would be a roll call vote. Yes, so we'll have motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. See, after a real equal time, they vote be your name. All right, ready for the big vote. I call it my own name. Yay. Rob Diggle? Yes. Yay. You? Yay. Yay. Carl, yay. Unanimous vote? Yep. Thanks, sir.